Hello and welcome to the daily devotion from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Vicar Kirstein. Our epistle reading for today comes from the 18th Sunday after Trinity, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus that in every way you were enriched with him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In these verses, we hear a familiar greeting. In church, we often hear this greeting, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, I want to focus in on that word peace and talk a little bit about the peace of God or the peace that is from God. How do we use the word peace today? I think the main use that we see today has to do with peace as a feeling. When a difficult or important decision is finally made, one can say that he is at peace with his decision. When tragedy occurs or someone dies, those who survive seek peace within themselves as they mourn. We hear a lot about peace of mind, which is sort of like not being worried or bothered by something. For example, when you install an alarm system on your house, you have peace of mind knowing that the alarm system protects your home while you're away. You aren't as worried or as bothered by the possibility of intruders as you once were. You have peace of mind. Then there is the kind of peace that means that the war is over and that the two sides who were once fighting and killing each other are no longer doing that. The hostilities have ended and now we are in a state of peace. When we hear about the peace of God or the peace from God, our minds instantly jump to peace as some sort of feeling that we should have. But is the peace of God just a feeling or an emotion? Not quite. The peace of God is not only some sort of feeling, and there is a danger in saying that it is. When the peace of God is declared to you, it is real, even if you don't feel it. The same is true of forgiveness. Take, for example, a Christian man who goes to the divine service, confesses his sin, and receives forgiveness and absolution from the pastor. After church, he goes to his pastor and says, Pastor, I don't feel like my sins have been forgiven. I don't feel like God is near to me. His pastor says in response, which of these are you more likely to believe? The sure and certain word of Almighty God that your sins have been forgiven and that God is near to you or your feelings that say otherwise? The truth is God is near to you. God has forgiven your sins. His word tells us this. 
His word is certain and sure because of what Jesus Christ has done in his death and resurrection. In the same way, the peace of God should not be considered only a feeling that one may or may not have. But if the peace of God is not a feeling, then what is it? The peace of God is the reality that Jesus has won the war and the final victory. Jesus made it possible for sinful man to be saved. He has redeemed mankind. And now we are no longer doomed to be the eternal enemies of our Heavenly Father, but sons and heirs of salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. We are heirs of the promise of eternal life and salvation and the forgiveness of sins. We could not have done this ourselves. God has been gracious to us, and the peace from Him is a very present reality, not just a simple feeling. Make no mistake, there is great comfort that comes from these words. Know always that Jesus has bled and died for you and that he was raised from the dead and ascended into heaven for you. There he prepares a place for you. Thanks be to God. Amen.